Hi, my name is Dr. Natalie Candela. I'm a hypnotherapist and a transformation coach. Welcome to my channel. You're about to listen to a recording of one of my regression sessions. Enjoy. I want you to tell me the very first thing that you see below you or the very first impressions that you have as you come back down to the surface. Good boy. And what else do you see around you? Fields. It's an Indian. Like a Native American? Yes. So I'd like you to look down at your feet and tell me if you're wearing anything on your feet. No. Just become aware of your body. Tell me what you're wearing on your body. Just some kind of shorts, cloth, I don't know. Now what are you experiencing right now? As in lonely? I don't know where anyone is. Are you scared? Yeah. So as you take your next breath, you're going to feel a warm stream of comfort flowing all through your body, just calming you down. So you will be able to observe the experience and feel very much at peace within. So describe to me the fields that you see. I have a lot of wildflowers. How old are you? Nine. Are you healthy? Yeah. So I'd like you to become aware of how you came to be in that field. Did you have others with you before? Yeah. Who was with you? We had three families. And so one of the families was yours? Yes. And who was there from your family? My mother. My sister. How old is your sister? Three, four years older than me. Do you have a father? Yes. But he was not with you? He's not with us. Where is he? I don't know where he is. Why were you there? Where were you heading? I was heading home. I left. I wanted to go hunting. Did they know that you were going? No. Why did you want to go alone? Because that's what my dad did. So did you want to show that you could provide like your dad? I don't know. Just take a deep breath and you will feel a sense of peace flowing through you. So just become aware of yourself still with those families. I'm not with them. I know, but I'd like you to go back in time. I can't go back. I'm on the hill. Okay. And you're on the hill by yourself looking for them? Oh, they're there. So you're back with them? No, I can't go back. When you said they are there, who's there? My mom and my sister and the other families. But you cannot return to them? I'm too scared. Why are you scared? 
I know they're all dead. Something happened to them? Yeah. Did it happen while you went away to hunt? Yeah. I don't know what happened. So when you return, are you able to find them? I'm not come back. Were you aware that something was happening to them? That's why you knew about it without coming back? No. How did you discover? Fires are burning. That was our home. I heard screaming. So your homes were attacked? Or did yes. something happen? They were attacked. Do you see the people that attacked you? No. I heard screams. And I ran back. I'm stuck. Stuck where? On the hillside. Is it close to where your homes were? Overlooking. So you can see from there the burning settlement? Yeah. So I'd like you to become aware of what you were experiencing when you told me that you were on the road with three families. I just knew there were three families with us. We lived here. You were just settled there with just three families together? Yes. I understand. And was your father in that settlement? He is, but he left to go hunting. So when you were attacked, was he away? Yes. Was everybody killed other than you? Yeah. Okay. So now you're on that hilltop, and as you're watching, I want you to feel a deep, gentle flow entering your body, relaxing it and calming it and healing it along the way. So you can observe just feeling peace and relaxation as you're watching from the hilltop. Do you notice the people that attacked you? I don't see them. Do you decide what to do next? I'm just scared. I was scared. Of course. Are you staying in place? Do you know where your father might be? He went hunting. And when do you think he might be back? A week. So on the count of three, you're going to move forward in time to the time when you make your next move. One two, and three. And tell me what happens next. I go into the woods to look for my father. And tell me what happens. I don't find him. How long are you wandering around? Long time. Are you able to hunt for yourself? find food? Yes. What do you eat? Whatever I can find. Rodents, fish. Do you cook them? Not right now. Do you eat them raw? Yes. Do you know how to start a fire? No. And so on the count of three, I'd like you to go to the next significant event in that journey. One, two, and three. And tell me what you're experiencing. Kindness. Tell me more about that. People help me. I get food. Where do you find these people? 
another place. Another village? Yeah. How big is it? Not big. How many families do you see there? Just one. That girl sneaks me food. So they live by themselves? Yeah. Can you see their house? Yeah. Describe it to me. Paul cabin, barn. And who are the people that live there? I don't know. Can you describe to me how the girl looks? Blonde hair, my age. So these are white people? Yes. She sneaks food to you because she doesn't want the parents to know about you? Yeah. How do you think they would react? They don't like us. And where are you staying now? In the woods, behind their house a little ways. How long have you been on the road now? I feel like a year. Are you able to communicate with a little girl? No. Does she speak a different language? She doesn't get real close to me. Does she seem afraid of you? No. She smiles. She doesn't come where I'm at. So how much is she helping you? She just leaves me food from time to time. How long do you stay there behind their house? A while. I camp up there. Now, do you make another decision about what to do next? I gotta leave. So you've been on your own for about a year now. Have you developed any skills? I still can't make fire. How do you survive when it gets cold? Does it get colder? Yeah. It's a cave behind their house. So do you leave at some point? When it gets cold. And what do you do next? Try to find people like me. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the next significant event or when you find people like you. One, two, and three. And tell me what happens. I find hunters. Native hunters? Yeah. And what happens? They take me back. Where? To where they live. Do you ask them about your father? I try. They don't really understand me either. So they speak a different language? Okay. Do they look like you? Or? They look like me. And so just move to the time when you reach their settlement and describe to me what you see. There's a lot of them. A lot. Can you describe how they live? How does the settlement look? At least 50 families. It's big. Very mean to me at first. Why is that? They don't know me. So how do they treat you? The one hunter. When we get back, throws me by my hair, drags me around. Why do you think he's dragging you by your hair? They don't know what I am either. What do they do with you then? I sleep outside of the 
village. Did they give you food? Yes. Men are talking. They don't know what to do with me. Are you able to communicate with them at all? Not much. What are you able to communicate to them? Food, hunting, father, family. But they still don't trust you? No. So move forward in time, a week or two, and tell me if things change. Yeah. What's happening now? I'm a part of them now. Why did they decide to accept you? I don't know. Do you live with one family? On my own. Did they give you a place to live? Yes. Can you describe it to me? It's small. I have fire. I can make fire. Did they teach you how to make fire? Yeah. And what does this home look like on the outside? It's a teepee. It's round. The top is flat, though. It's not like what we think a normal. What is it covered with? Skin. The top has straw. Did they build it just for you, or did they have one available? We built it. You were participating in it too? Yeah. Mine's not very good. How do you feel about being part of them now? Thankful. I still wonder about my father. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the next significant event in that life. One, two, and three. Tell me what happens. I'm at the lake. Is that the lake where your home was at the beginning? Yeah. I'm How a lot older. How old are you now? Twenties. I don't really know. I'm an adult. And what's happening? Just standing at the edge of the woods, looking at the lake. How do you feel standing there? Proud. Angry. Feel more anger. About what? All the wars, fighting. Is it the fighting between the natives or between the white people and the natives? Everyone. Do you participate in the war? Yeah. Do you want to? Not anymore. Was there a point at which you wanted to? Yeah. And what changed? Not sure. Have you ever found your father? No. Are you still with the same people? I live more on my own. I'm still part of them, but I don't stay where they all stay. Why did you decide to go on your own? It's felt better, more comfortable. Do you have a partner with you or wife? Yes. Do you have any children? Two. Tell me about your wife. I just know she follows me anywhere. Are you happy with her? Yes. She loves her village. We live outside of it. But you live close to the village? Yeah. Everyone was mad Bad. because I didn't want to stay in the village. Tell me why you feel more comfortable outside of it. It's dangerous. 
dangerous being within the village? All the wars, everyone fighting, always under attack, different people. You feel that if you're by yourself, you're less likely to be attacked? Yeah. Did you communicate that to your wife? Yes. Does she support your decision? Yes. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the last day in that life. One, two, and three. And tell me what you're experiencing. The being attacked. Who's being attacked? The whole village. By whom? White people. Are you in the village at that time? No. I go down, just try to protect everyone. In the village? Yeah. And what do you see? I can't protect everyone. What do you do? I try. What do you see happening around you? Everyone's dying. How are they being attacked? Guns, horses, on foot, everywhere. So when you get there, what do you do? Begin fighting. How do you fight? I have a blade, that's all I have. How successful are you? I killed a bunch. I get shot. Where is the wound? Chest. And are you killed? Yeah. So just allow your spirit to lift out of the body gently. And immediately you will begin to feel relief. A sense of growing peace and comfort. Now as you look back at the body that you just left behind and the life and your family, what are you feeling and experiencing? I couldn't protect everyone. And as your spirit continues to soar higher and higher, you may notice that someone steps forward to welcome you back to your spirit home. It may be someone that you recognize, and it may be someone in a physical shape or not. I just feel warm, relaxed. I can't see anything. Very good. Now, as you feel that warmth and relaxation, I want you to send a beam of healing light to your chest where that wound was. And just imagine that the tissue of the body begins to heal, like fibers in a blanket that was torn begin to reconnect, fuse together, rebuilding the muscles. And it continued to do that until that wound is mended and continue to send that healing light until it re-energizes that area. Now the body that you left behind was wounded, but with this healing light, you are releasing the pain of that wound from your soul memory. It still happened, but its impact is now being healed, being released. And let me know when you feel that that wound has been mended and healed. I'm here.
as you continue to move higher and higher in your soul consciousness, I'd like you to just look back at that life from a soul perspective. And I want you to become aware of why your soul wanted to have that life experience. What did it want to learn? I can't protect everything. Did it want to learn to let go and not control the outcomes? Yeah. Your soul got a pretty powerful experience of having to let go, didn't it? Yeah. Having gotten that full experience and now having realized what the purpose of it was, are you able to release that sense of guilt, that sense of maybe disempowerment? So just set an intention to allow all of that energy that has been trapped within you, that you have been holding on to, to begin to flow out of your body through the soles of your feet. Visualize a beautiful white light that comes in and showers you and just fills your entire body. That white light that gives you warmth and comfort and helps you heal so that what you take with you is the experience, the lesson that you intended to take away. But the pain, the sorrow, the loss, that is released. And you will know what's released when you feel a deeper sense of peace and comfort within you. Let me know when you feel that. Yes. Beautiful. So now I'm going to ask all of the entities from the other lives to recede into the past to the time where they belong with much love and thanks for the information that they have given us welcome back i hope you enjoyed the session please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you click on the bell you will be notified of any of my future postings thank you bye